Episode 10, Parameter Settings for the Gimbal Controller. In this episode, we will show you how to use the remote controller to adjust the gimbal's direction and set up other related functions. First, power up the camera on the aircraft and bind the control module with the remote controller. Power on the gimbal, then use a tweezer or a pointed object to long press the binding button on the controller. When the receiver's indicator light flashes, it indicates that it has entered Wi-Fi mode. Press the button again to enter binding mode. Pay attention to the control module's indicator light. If it flashes twice every second, it is in binding mode. Now, power on the remote controller and short press the left 5-axis menu button to enter the tools menu. Select Express LRS to enter the binding page. Press the right 5-axis menu button to scroll down and select Bind, then click Bind to start the binding process. Once the binding is successful, the receiver's indicator light will always on, and the main interface of the remote controller will display the signal strength, indicating that the binding is complete. After binding, you still won't be able to control the gimbal directly. Additional settings are required on the remote controller. As for the settings related to the gimbal's functions, we can also refer to the official GitHub website. First, short press the left 5-axis menu button to enter the tools menu. Use the right 5-axis menu button to select Express LRS and set the first packet rate to 100Hz full. Then scroll down to find switch mode and set it to 8CH. Scroll down to the end, right-click on other devices to enter, and then tap to access the receiver LUA script settings interface. Wait for the progress bar to finish loading. Find protocol option to change CRSF protocol to DJI RS Pro protocol. After setting up, you can control the gimbal's pan, tilt, and roll. You can also set up the remote controller's channel switches to enable remote camera recording, switch gimbal modes, and reset the gimbal. However, these functions are only supported on remotes with a three-position switch. Below, we'll guide you through setting up these features. Press the left 5-axis menu button to the right to enter the model menu. Use the right 5-axis menu button to scroll to page 5 of the model menu. Navigate down to CH6 and short-press the right button to enter the menu. Select a three-position switch to set as the recording switch. You can choose any three-position switch to control camera recording based on your needs. To use this function, the switch must start at the middle position. When toggling up or down, return to the middle position within 0.4 seconds to control the start and stop of camera recording. Come to CH7, short press the right button to enter the menu. Choose a three position switch to set it for switching between gimbal modes, like panning mode, dual axis follow, and custom mode, with each position controlling a different mode. This way, you can easily control the shooting modes of the gimbal with the remote, which is very useful during filming. It's important to note that in most gimbal-mounted shoots, the gimbal should be set to custom mode. Otherwise, the gimbal will rotate with the drone, which can affect your ability to judge and control the shooting. Come to CH8, short press the right button to enter the menu, and select a three-position switch to set as the quick gimbal reset. This is used to quickly align the gimbal with the aircraft's direction during flight, making it easier to locate the subject and determine the aircraft's orientation. To use this function, the switch must start at the middle position. When toggling up or down, return to the middle position within 0.4 seconds to reset the gimbal forward or backward. That's all for the setup of control the gimbal's direction and other related functions using the remote controller. If you find that the gimbal's movement speed or channel configuration isn't suitable, you can adjust these settings in the DJI Ronin app by entering the user parameter settings making adaptive adjustments to parameters like follow speed, joystick channel settings, and smoothness. That's all for this episode. In the next episode, we'll introduce the possible reasons for successful binding but failure to arm. Thanks for watching.